Hi everyone, welcome to Shelf Control. I'm Norm. I'm Lisa. And we're doing uh, Teotihuacan. Not sure if I'm saying that right. Somebody in the comments sent us a, a link to the pronunciation and the, uh, the Aztecs stressed the second to last instead of Teotihuacan. Teotihuacan? 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 Sorry. So, yeah, I, I hope I hope all the Aztecs watching aren't uh, aren't gonna unsubscribe. We're trying our best here. And speaking of subscribing, well, you pulled that out. Two hundred subscribers as of today. So yeah, wow. that was uh, wow. that was incredible. I checked uh, the subscriber count. We got two hundred. That's about two hundred more than we expected. Maybe one ninety five. I mean, we but, thought, you know, our kids would be obligated. Certain friends and family would be obligated. But we really never thought we'd get to 200 subscribers. So thank you so much so. for following along with us on our <coughs> horrible, fun, silly videos that we're yeah. doing for fun. So people who seem to enjoy talking about older games seem to be finding us slowly. Because the YouTube algorithm doesn't push old board games on people. So we appreciate every one of you that has found us and has decided to subscribe. So, so talking about old games, then, here's a new <laughs> copy of an old game. Is this an old game? It's not crazy old, but this is a re redone. Oh, So okay, that's new for me. I thought this was a brand new game we kickstarted. No, this was a, a game I wonder when it originally came out. I, I don't know. I'll put the thing down here saying when it originally came out. But yeah, it's been hugely popular. A lot of uh, expansions for it. And they came out with the Deluxe Master Set, which put everything together in one big Giant box. box. And, and if you saw our unboxing, um, the box did come damaged. So we reached out to customer service. Um, they offered to send us another box, but again, with no guarantee, an empty box being shipped is is fragile, obviously. But we did get it. No, um, no damage Excellent. to the new no, one. No problems with the replacement. So thank you so much to the publishers for that. Um, customer service was great there. And so now we've got changed out the box. We've got quite a few plays of this in at two, three, and four player counts. We have the fifth player expansion. We haven't played it with five, so we can't really speak to that. We but. did bust out all the modules, and Norm and I are the only ones who have played all the modules. So the base game, we've played two, three, and four players. But um, sometime this week or next week, we'll get all of the modules played at three players, and then um, hopefully we'll get four players. But I don't let's, think that's going to change our opinion of the modules. No, so. no, not at all. So let's talk about it. So Teotihuacan is uh, almost like a worker placement, but like with a rondel, uh, everyone has dice that are your workers, but you don't roll the dice. They'll all start at level one and depending on the your setup they'll start on different spots on the board i'm going to move this out of the way probably and as you do master actions your dice go up the number so once you do a master action it goes from a one to a two and then you keep going and then once you go from a five to a six your dice retires they yeah uh, they call it ascending it ascends and so then there's actions you can take something will happen and then it spits back out as a one. Yep. And Norm, you're gonna do a video on the play. I'm, the... I'm gonna I'm gonna try to do a uh, a how I teach on this game. Uh, I'm the primarily the one who learns the rules and teaches it to the people in our you're, our play group. You're primarily the one. I'm I am the one. So uh, I think. I think I've gotten teaches down pretty good. Uh, Lisa refuses to play a game that somebody else teaches. <laughs> so that is very true. He he knows how I learn, and it's just best. So we've had friends come over and try to explain a game. Meanwhile, Norm is just sitting there reading the rule book as our friends are explaining, which is kind of rude. But that's just I mean that's Norm. He just he needs to understand the game, and then I learn the game, and then. I ask him questions. Yeah. 
so uh, I'm going to try and do a, a video uh, explaining how I teach the game and uh, including the modules. I don't know. We'll see how long the uh, the base teach goes, whether or not it's broken up into two two videos. But I think uh, we've played with the, the modules, and so I think it'd be interesting. I couldn't find any videos online of how you play the modules, so... Whether, whether you want that as a separate video or all together in one great big massive teach, uh, you know, let me know in the, in the comments and uh, I'll see what I can do. The game, it's a little bit much to go into to tell you how everything plays right, right, bef right before we give our review. But uh, a brief description is, uh, will the board fold up this way? No, not nope. quite. So you've got spaces that will let you collect resources mm -hmm. that go up based on how many dice you have in that location and how strong the dice are, what the, what the, what the number is on that dice. So if you have a one dice in a spot and you move in, you only have the one dice at a one, you're not getting something very good. You're just getting a point in all of the spaces. You're either getting a cacao, which is basically your money value, which is interesting. So. Um, this particular game, it has stone, it has wood, it has gold, and then cacao. But cacao is what you're using to pay for things. Like when you want to, if you move into one space and there's other workers there, you have to pay a cacao based on how many workers are there of different color. It's quite interesting that cacao is of more value in this game. At the end of every round, you actually have to feed your people and it takes cacao to feed them. There's not a spot on the board necessarily that gets you the cacao. Like there's a spot to get stone, a spot to get wood, and a spot to get gold. But to get cacao, when you go to a spot, you either choose to take the action at the spot. And like she said, in this case, if I move in here, there's two other colors there. I would have to pay two cacao to take that action. Like you could choose, instead of taking the action, move in there, not pay any cacao, and collect cacao equal to the number of colors that were there plus one. So mm -hmm. in this case, with the blue and the yellow there, I move in there, I could get three cacao. And then that means I can move in somewhere else later and pay the cacao to take the action. And we call it observing, but what's the proper term? I don't know what the proper term is. <laughs> A friend of ours just said, just, I'm going to observe, and so since then, that's what we've called it. I think it's just collecting uh, collecting cacao. No, it's got to have a certain name. Uh, collect cacao. Okay. You can take the collect cacao action. It's the collect cacao action. <clears throat> so, yeah, we've just started calling it observing. This guy's just coming in and observing <laughs> these other workers and mm -hmm. taking some of, the, some of the cacao. But, so, you're collecting these resources, and like she said... The resources are used for different things. Wood is done primarily for building uh, houses that uh, are taken from the... What is the, this called? The Valley of the Dead? The, uh, Avenue. Avenue. Avenue of the Dead. And so that leads to some scoring. Uh, stone is used for building the pyramid, although you need some wood as you build up higher mm -hmm. on the pyramid. I guess the, the ramps to slide the stones yeah. up. And gold is used primarily for the decorations that go up the staircases and for the technologies, which are like little, little powers that you can mm -hmm. learn as you go through the game. When you're setting up, the board has spots and everything printed on it, but the game also comes with tiles that are, that are different and, uh, some of them are exactly what's printed out here on the board, and some of them are modules. And so you can actually play the game taking the ones that are the exact same as the board that's, boards that are already out there, randomize them, mm -hmm. and put them out. So that's not a wood collection spot anymore. That's a stone collection. And instead of collecting stone here, this is where you actually build the pyramid. And you can randomize yeah. the, the layout so your path around is different. Doesn't it say to, to not randomize <coughs> one and six or yeah. one and eight? One and eight stay the same in, but, the, in the same spot. But then you can mix everything else up. But they do have uh, up, updated, yeah, like this one is the eight for building the pyramid. It would go here. But that's a module. 
but this this one is uh, is a module. But they do say in the rules that if you want to, you can take the one tile and the eight tile, mix it in, and mix it up. But you're gonna get some some really weird things sometimes. So uh, we haven't we haven't tried doing that. Uh, but you do have this that can ra randomize the setup as well as uh, change the locations a little bit. Uh, you've got a lot of meaty wood bits with this. Yeah, the deluxe version came with so many um, wood pieces that are, are pretty cool. So these are the, the pyramid tiles that you'll put down and you'll, you're going to try and match symbols for points as you put them down. And based on the level of the pyramid you're building on, you, <coughs> you get points based on that. So one point for the base, two point, no, three points for level two, and then how many points for level it's seven? One, three, points. five, and seven. Okay. So there's four levels of your pyramid. I thought there was just three levels. There's four. There's four levels because the top one is the very, is, very yep, top. Yep. We've never gotten We've that never high. gotten that high. But yeah, you'll just be building it up like this as you. Uh, as you go and matching the things and as as it goes up it takes a little bit more resources it takes more wood to go up higher and higher and higher and it's, the point values go up higher and higher and higher and it, every piece steps in a little bit because you're you're making a pyramid making in a the pyramid. middle and so you're actually getting this this pyramid built up in here and, and the same thing kind of applies when you're building the steps, the, the decorative steps to go up the pyramid. You're still trying to match the symbols, which give you additional points. If, they're, if you're able to match the symbol with one that's colored, you're able to go up um, this track here. You've got a temple track. Which gives you resources um, or just different things based on which track you're going up. So this one gives you resources, the green gives you cacao, the red gives you points. And the higher you get, you know, of course, the better value it is. And if you get all the way to the top, no one else can get there. And, and that's usually yeah, a higher so point value. There's a six, seven, and five point spot that if you get there first, nobody else can get that. Right below that spot is like an, another end game scoring thing that has stuff printed on the board, but you can randomize those as well. Yeah. So in this case, if you got up to this spot on the blue, you'd get 15 points at the end of the game. Which is pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, if you get to the red, it's three points for every step that you've taken along the avenue of, of the dead. And then this one is points based on the value of your dice when you when you get up there. So you might be like, okay, my strategy is to go up on the avenue of the dead a lot. So I'm also going to move up on the red track so I can get that end game bonus for extra points as well. And the game is made up of three rounds, um, and each round has a certain number of turns based on where you are in the lunar cycle. So you've got, um, you have a black and a white tile that go out on the board, and at the end um, of the last player's turn, they tick up the sun. And so once the sun meets the moon, an eclipse happens, you, get you score scoring. based on that end of that season, and then you separate everything and you start again. But this time the moon is a little bit closer. So every every turn, every round, when the last person goes, this creeps further up. And when it meets, meets here, you get one last, you finish the current round, play one more round, score, then you'll move this up one and move this back to the beginning for the second round. And then you'll do that for a third round, and at the end of the third round, you do your end game score. And you've got your tableau here, um, and this tableau is, was made to accommodate all of the modules. So um, you can collect masks, and based on how many masks you have at the end of each um, round, it, it's scored based on the number of, of masks you have. If you're building technologies, your technologies will go here. Um, your resources kind of go in this area and the rest of this is is basically for modules so um, it's a lot of unused board if you're just playing the base game but it's not a hindrance 
If you play the original game, you don't have a player board. You just keep everything in front of you. Oh, I love the player board. So the, these player boards are nice, but yeah, if you're playing just the base game with no modules, you're only using like that middle part, basically. Right. Maybe the masks if you're collecting and you, them. And you've actually got four dice, but you only start the game with three of them, and then you have another one sitting here. And there's ways that you can release your fourth dice. And again, dice help you get, the more dice you have in one location, you get more of that particular item. So it helps you to have four out, but you don't need it in the game. And yeah, again- You can win the game with mm -hmm. your original three. Yep. And then um, there's just extra pieces here that you would get with a separate module. So here's your player board. You don't need it if you're playing the base game, but I really like it. It keeps everything organized. If you have organized. table space, yeah. don't go ahead and use yeah. it. It's, this game is a table hog, so it does take up a lot of space. Um, with our deluxe um, Kickstarter, our pledge, we got this um, cardboard container that Norm put together and it holds all the resources in it. You've got five gold or you've got individual gold, same with, whoop, same with all the other resources. And so he put this together. We don't ever take this apart. It's kind of like the um, Everdell tree. Once we put it together, it's it's just, that's it. That's how it's gonna stay forever. But it does fit in the box. Uh, yeah, this this piece in the back will, will slide out and then it can fasten onto the top, but it doesn't hold in the stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I might do a video on how I, I pack this up too, because the insert's not great. And, uh, and so I've, I've come up with my own solution uh, people were complaining about those, like uh, there's a misprint when you're trying to put this together, uh, that like the colors don't match on the on the inside for what the resources are. Mm. Uh, I don't find that a problem because you can just look at it and be yeah. like, that's wood, that's gold, that's stone, and and so forth. The one thing that I think is kind of irritating about this, and I don't know if that's part of their fix, but I think this should have been put on this end because. The, in the front has the fives. It, it has the it has a little graphic inside the the spot that shows this is where the five golds go. And to me, the ones should be in the front, and the fives in the back because you you don't get the fives as often. That doesn't bother me. I'm usually the one to pass out the resources. Yeah. I mean, it's it just a. It's a small thing. Mm -hmm. Once once you're like, okay, the ones are back here, you just you just reach back there and, and grab it. So I don't know that actually uh, there are a few printing errors in this game that they're that they're going to fix. And so this is actually one of the things that they're going to reprint. I kudos for them for doing this this much because I don't think this is unusable. Mm -hmm. uh, you know it's. It may not be exactly how they wanted it to go, but it works fine. It and, works for us. And nobody gets confused and be like, wait, this uh, you're, you're telling me this this isn't gold because it's got the yellow uh, border inside the inside the box. And it's like, no, that's, that's stone. And it's obvious it's stone. So, I never noticed. It's just the inside, these little cross pieces that just don't, it's... Most of the time, you don't even see them, so. I don't, I don't, I don't, this doesn't bother me. I will say that it made it really, really hard trying to put it together because <laughs> it didn't come with any instructions, but I was like, okay, this, this makes sense. So I would line the colors up to, to match and the pieces wouldn't fit together the way the colors would match. And it's like, okay, the only way this goes together is if you flip this around the other way and it, and it doesn't match anymore. But once I got it together, it's, it's fine. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's a couple other misprints. Uh, this board is double-sided. Does this side fold up? Okay. This, this board is double-sided. It's got the exact same thing on this side, but it's a more vibrant color. A lot more reds and greens mm -hmm. on, on this side. We haven't played with this. I mean, I've never seen that other side. Yeah, well this side has a printing error on it mm -hmm. uh, where uh, it's like one of the values of how much resources you oh. get is actually wrong. You get one more than what is what is shown. 
And so I kind of, we'll have to play with this side and, and see if we like this color, but just like looking at it right now, I'm not a huge fan of this bright color. So we've always played with this side. It's got the right printing on it. So, so that's fine. Everything that's got misprints on it, they're, they're gonna provide replacements. Uh, they're coming out with a second printing of this with all the fixes that uh, is, is coming out, uh, I think in January, I think is when they said they were doing that. And at the same time, they're gonna print out everything, the new things here, a new a new replacement board, new oh, replacements. Wow. So some of these tiles have misprints on the, uh, on the brighter side as well. Just some things that slipped through quality control that they're going to, that they're going to replace free of charge, free shipping for those of us who backed it first but it's going to be corrected for everyone who backs it in the future. Uh, and they did really well with emailing and, and taking responsibility for some of the things that didn't go as smooth as people had hoped. So um, kudos to them for that. Uh, you know, so the, some of the changes, and Norm and I aren't really picky about stuff like that. Like we want, when you buy a game, you want everything on it correct, but we don't get angry or frustrated and and we're not just and, and fussing at the at the manufacturers or the the um, designers. But they did really, really well in communicating and sending out pretty lengthy emails explaining what they're gonna do, how they're gonna fix it, just taking full responsibility and accountability for it. And and that I respected that. I appreciated that. One thing people are disappointed with is the, the insert, yeah. which they advertised in the, the Game Found campaign as a, a premium insert that was going to make setup and tear down easier. And it wasn't. Mm -hmm. It's just this thin, thin plastic. They didn't use any uh, uh, third party like uh, Game Trays or anyone like that to do the insert. But they did say that they that they were going to provide a insert with the second uh, game found campaign that would be available to first first time backers with at a discount but looking at uh, they went with folded space which do the the wooden ones that you you break out and you you like Put them together yourself kind of like this but with like maybe like a not quite a balsa wood but that that kind of thing and uh it uses it uses the the plastic tray on the bottom and then you're going to fill it with that and i think 20 euros is what they were going to provide it for for people like us the first time backers except we won't pay with euros but looking at it i think i'm going to stick with the way that i box it up so I might do a video showing how I box it. Uh, I've actually taken out one, maybe two of the inserts, the, the thinner ones like this. It actually fits this in the box. So you can just pull this out and set it on the table, which is so much nicer than having to fill it up every game. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I understand why they went with the uh, folded space because it ships in flat sheets of wood that you break out you you break out the pieces and then build it into a 3d so shipping is much much cheaper on that than the big thing full of air that you're shipping out so i understand why they did it i don't think it's necessarily the right answer but i mean they're at least they're doing something they're admitting that this is this was not going to cut it and so they're, they're doing something some people like the folded space inserts. I don't think I'm gonna spend 20 euros to, to do that when I've come up with my own system for, for packing it up. But other than that, they're gonna send out all the, all the misprinted stuff for, for free shipping and giving you the option of, a, of an insert if you, mm -hmm. if you want it at a reduced price. So I don't really have any complaints for, for the company other than this should have been a better insert from the beginning. Yep. But like Norm said, he's going to do a video kind of explaining the game a little bit, teaching um, the game. So we're not going to go into a lot of discussion on that. 
Um, so I think primarily what we're going to do is just talk about our likes and dislikes, which we have. I mean, we've been talking a lot about that and then giving it some ratings um, just so that maybe this video isn't quite as long as our others that we go into explaining the game and then talking about it. It, it tends to sometimes hit an hour and that's a lot to ask of people to sit for an hour. This, this would be a, a, this would be so much longer than that if we oh yeah discussed everything, explained how every space works and things like that. And we like to run our mouth a lot, so <coughs> sometimes there's just gabbing. So anyway, yeah. So you want to talk about things you like about the game? I like everything about the game. At first the game was very overwhelming because there's so many things you need to do and you don't know how and you don't even know where to start. So um, you're having to collect resources to then to be able to do actions and you've got to strategically figure out how can you get the more bang for your buck. So how are you going to get all of your dice in one location to build um, with a discount? Because the, So for instance if you're building some of the decorations for the steps if you have more players there, you get a discount of gold. Not players, but more of your own dice. More of your own dice there. You get discounts of gold. So you want to try to figure out how to do that. Or how are you going to get a lot of gold? So the whole game is you trying to figure out the best way to get what you need. And again, there's so many different ways to get points. You've got these temple tracks that you're climbing up. You can build your... the. The pyramid, you can build the decorations for the pyramid, the alley, alley of the dead? Is that Avenue. Avenue of the dead. Um, collecting masks. Collecting masks. So there's so many different things. Um, re the technology actually helps you, gives you a little bit of a, a special power to help you do certain things. Some might give you a certain number of points if you use the action on a certain spot, or it might give you extra resources if mm -hmm. you use a certain spot, or... Or climb like up that. on the, the temple track. So you've, you're trying to figure out, okay, where do I even start? But then as you play the game, okay, this method is, is what's becoming apparent. It may not be your strategy at first, but it could be all of a sudden you're getting a lot of wood. So you're like, okay, I guess I'm going to be building on the um, pyramid and building in the Avenue of the Dead. So it just depends on, on where your luck falls as to what strategy you're going to take because if you try to follow a certain strategy it's not always going to come to fruition. You may say I'm going to go hard on masks but usually the masks have a cost of cacao or wood and or wood. Um, mostly wood for them I think but some are very rare so it's harder to get them. You have to add gold and wood or something like that mm -hmm. to get those. And but. so you you may say I'm going hard on masks but none of them show up because they, they they're random. They come out at random on certain locations that you can pick up and if the masks all of a sudden just dry up well then it's like okay I need to go somewhere else because masks, right. masks isn't working. How the designers put all of this together to make it work so well is very very impressive. I obviously am not a game designer. I would not even know where to start. I have no desire for any of that. I just want to play the games. But what they did here was amazing. Everything works so well together. The theme seems to go really well. Uh, one thing, uh, talking about the eclipse and scoring phase, you know, like like we were saying, every every round after the last person goes, it moves forward. It also bumps forward when somebody's dice ascends goes from a five to a six and then ascends and comes back out as a one it will move forward yep and so that means you know just because there's 10 10 rounds this uh this this season does not mean that that's how many it's going to take because right. I, I retire if i retire two dice and it's moving up there somebody else retires the dice all of a sudden you're like okay this season's almost over and i haven't done anything i've set out to do and so there's there's that little bit in there too that just makes it a, a little bit spicy. You can't just be like, oh, there's five more rounds in this season. I can do that, I can do that, I can do that. Because then somebody's going to be like, you know what? I'm going to level this dice up to a six. And then all of a sudden you're like, okay, uh, now i got to try to figure out how I'm going to do that. Yep. And there is, there is a lot of strategy about how you're moving your dice around. 
when you move a dice, you can only you can move it one to three spots forward. And you can't use the action at a spot where people are if you don't have the cacao to pay to use that action. So then you're like, okay, maybe I'll move this guy in here and get cacao. So then I can move this guy two in there, pay my three cacao, and now take the action. Mm -hmm. And you're also trying to be like, okay, how can I get three of my dice ending up in there so I can take the, the big action there? And... The first time that we played this game, we played it at, at four people, and I got stomped. I just, nothing was working out. People were putting their dice in places where it's like, okay, I don't have the cacao to take that action that I wanted to yeah. do, so I, I guess I'm just going to gather cacao, and oh, it was it was bad. I think I won that <coughs> game, but I have no idea how. I had no idea what I was doing. I also, uh, now I've kind of gone to the other way, where... I end up with way too many resources at the end of the game where it's like, okay, I've got two people in the wood. It seems like it would be silly not to go ahead and put my third die in there and just get a ton of wood and cacao. So now I'm prepped, but then I get all that and then it's like, no, there's two rounds left. And it's like, okay, I got all this wood now. I've only got two turns to, to spend it and... So now I'm going to have to learn to, to pull back on the efficiency a little bit and, <laughs> and be like, okay, ending the game with resources is not points at the end of the game. Norm is very much a machine builder. So when he plays games, that's how he's looking at us. I want the most efficient action. Yeah. And in this game, doing the most efficient action may not get you the points that you that you want. Now he has won the last two games. With so a there's lot something of there is something for the efficiency, but yeah, it seems like it I get so work. much more done if I it's like a, if I didn't waste that turn putting them there. Maybe I maybe I do put them there and use that little bit of wood to build on the pyramid for some points cuz there's a lot of points for building mm -hmm. the pyramid. Uh in the rule book, there's actually uh, an advanced rule where instead of being one point for the first level and then three, five, seven, being just one, two, three, four points. So it kind of cuts down on how many points you actually get from the pyramid. We've never built that high on the pyramid for that to really impact the game. Yeah, because it's... Not only are you getting the points for, for building and matching the symbols in here, you get points based off of how many times you built on the pyramid in that season times a certain number. So I think the last game we played, I moved up on the pyramid track like six times and you get four points per movement up. So six times four is 24. And then if you're the furthest up, you get a bonus four. So that was 28 points in the first season just from doing the pyramid. Mm -hmm. There's no other place on the board that will give you that many right. points in one season. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, that might be a slight ding on the game is that <coughs> you can't ignore the pyramid. But when, when I teach this game to people, I tell them, hey, don't, don't ignore the pyramid. You know, it's, Try, try to stay at least a little bit competitive. Mm -hmm. Build at least one thing so you get at least that four four points. And But, you know, it's... You, you're not getting... If you're not building on the pyramid, you're, you are going to get stomped in the game. It, it's a huge advantage to be on there. So. So, so, like I said, I mean, for me, I don't know of anything I really dislike about the game. You have the option, instead of doing the main action, you can lock yourself in. Certain tiles, certain um, spaces have a place where you can lock in. And it allows you to do either the top or the bottom section of it. The top is generally moving up a temple track of a specific color. The bottom has a tile in it that could potentially have a mask. It could have other actions that you can take at any time. Um, yeah, so you have these yeah. discovery tiles that could be could be a mask. Oh, these are both masks, or 
Now this one lets you get two resources of of your choice, and so they, and so they you do can, different powers. You can choose you can which one you want to do, or you can pay a cacao and take both of them. And so that's pretty strong too. But once that die is locked, you can't use them until you unlock them. And the only way to unlock is to either pay three cacao to unlock it, or it'll unlock all your dice. It'll unlock all of them, or you can have one turn and say, okay, I'm unlocking and you'll unlock all of them, but that's the only action you have. So you really only want to do those if you've got all three or all four of your die locked um, to make the most advantage of it. And so that's another option you can do. And, and I have found that that works really well in certain modules. It gives you other ways to unlock your die. And so that's another way you have to kind of strategically plan how you do it. And so I would find in some of the modules, I would lock my dice and then I would do one of the special abilities that allows you to unlock a die. So that helps as well. So there's, I, I don't know of anything on this game I dislike. It seems to me, it seems to be balanced really, really well. Um, you know, I wasn't too keen on trying the modules, but now that we've tried them, I really like them. I think there's a couple that Norm could do with or not do with, but I like all of them. I used all of them. They were all um, very advantageous for me in my gameplay. So I, I, I don't know what I would change on the game. The modules insert in pretty seamlessly. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got this, this temple track here with the three temples. It's got this little cutout here because one of the modules adds a fourth a fourth color the orange and so then you got another temple track and when you play with that you've got a board that goes down on here where you can lock a die and move up the yellow uh, the orange, orange track and so it's just real simple you just put that down and put in that track and then it's like okay you got another track you know how those three work yep. this one works the exact same way uh, the, the only difference with this track is as you move up on it, you can gain these special powers that, that help you during the game that, uh, like this one here and lets you do both of those are of the actions really strong. with, do both actions without having to pay that one cacao. And it's, so you might go up that just for, for the abilities. That, so I, that I will you. say on the orange track, I mean, some of those that you unlock are incredibly strong. And of course, the higher you go up, those abilities are even stronger and like really strong. And I got really frustrated because Norm had gotten up there and and was just kicking my butt. But again, he had to focus pretty hard on going up the orange track in order to get those. So and the orange track just gives you those. Like, yeah, it doesn't give you points right. until you get to the very end. It doesn't give so you I, resources. So if you're doing orange. You need to make sure that, that orange track is helping you more than the other tracks. And I wouldn't say that that's out of balance in the game because you're sacrificing other things to solely focus on that orange track. So you're going to get some good rewards out of it. So I don't think that that's out of balance in the game. Um, the only the only negative I would have on this game, and that it's not in gameplay, but it is a table hog. Like it feels, I don't know of a game besides maybe Twilight Imperium that takes up as much room as this game does. So it's it's a huge table hog. And the more players you have, obviously, it's gonna take up even more space. So that's just, and bringing out the modules takes up even more table space. So that's just something to keep. If you've got a small table, you're not playing this game. So just keep that in mind. But everything else about this game, I, I really, really like. And, and setup is a bit of a beast. You know, if you're randomizing all these and putting them out. I've never gotta, had a problem with the setup. You've got to set up the pyramid with some starting tiles based on the numbers. you got to put all the discovery tiles down on the, those bases. you got to put all the houses on the Avenue of the Dead here. There's so much setup. This is not a game that you teach while you're setting it up. <laughs> When people, when no. it's like, okay, people are coming over to play Te Tehuacan. I'm setting it up. I'm randomizing everything. Everything that needs to be randomized is already going to be randomized. Then I'm going to teach you how to play, and then and then we'll 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 play because it'll it'll take way too much time uh -huh. to to set up and 
you yeah. know, people would just be sitting there watching you while you do it. So. Well, I've, t I've given my likes and dislikes. Yeah. I'm ready to score it. I, I like how randomized the game setup is. That adds to the setup time. But you know, these technologies, you play with six and you have a, a bag here full of them and you just randomly draw out six and be like, okay, these are the special abilities that you can possibly learn during and the Norm game. And Norm doesn't like a lot of random. I like random and setup. I Having a game be different every time you play it is helpful because you don't get tired of it. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be like, all right, I got this game down to where my first turn, I'm moving this die two spaces to go there. And then the next obvious thing is to move that one to there. If everything is laid out different, you don't get into that rut of, okay, here's my opening move. Right. And things like that. Uh, you've got modules that will give you a special, a special power. You're a, you start with a god or goddess that gives you some special powers throughout the game. And you get a pretty good power, but there's usually a cost but, but to it. But sometimes there's a downside. Yeah. Like, you know, you, know you, get, you get to do this, but you can't do this. And so you know, that, that gives you some, some randomization. You know, I, I like that kind of randomization. I don't like the randomization of, you know, I'm going to try and do this awesome thing. All right, roll, roll a die. Okay, you didn't do it. That's, that's not the kind of randomization I like. But, uh, yeah, you've got all kinds of setup. Multiple uh, player counts is so easy to do. Uh, if you're playing with, uh, with two or three people, it has, you have a, a, a deck of cards that tell you where at, the, at every season to put out three, three of a different color dice that you're not using. If it's two players, you put out two sets of three. Yeah, there's always going to be four colors out, four sets of die out on the board. And that simulates having four people on the board because you have to pay cacao based on how many different colors are there. And so in a two-player game, you wouldn't need cacao very much at all. You just move and be like, that spot's open, I'm, I'm going to go there for no cacao. Or one person's there, I'll pay one cacao, I don't care. But yeah, when you get like a a blue and a yellow on that space then you have to really think okay if i want to take that action i'm gonna have to pay two cacao to to go there and so the two player three player four player game really doesn't feel all that different mm -hmm. the the only thing that's different is in a two player game you're really watching how many points she's getting and what what she's doing if she's hitting that that pyramid hard it's like okay i'm gonna to have to hit it hard too because i don't want to get left behind so it plays really well at, at all the different player counts. It has a book here for solo. I haven't tried that yet. Oh, but there's a uh, there's a solo there's mode. A lot of books. So many, so many books. There's a book for the solo mode. Uh, there was a, a misprint in the book that they caught before shipping, so they printed uh, an errata page for that. So I I haven't hit that yet to see what the solo is like. I don't know if we'll ever play it at five players, but this seemed like the the time to get the fifth player expansion with the the rest of the game. So if that ever happened, would would be available. Haven't played it at five, and something that we haven't tried that I'm interested in trying is they have a book of expert challenges, hmm. which <clears throat> just kind of goes through, uh, like here's. Book one, it tells you the setup, what technologies to use, what uh, priests to have available, what royal tile. It basically tells you how to set up the game, and then if there's any special rules that that will change it a little bit. So just make it a little bit more challenging. And just make it a little bit, a little bit more challenging. And so, you know, it's. I don't know how how these work. I haven't read through them about the the special rules, but. You know, this could be a, a, a fun way to to play through the game too. So I, yeah, I I'm overall pleased with this, especially since what errors they did come out with, they're they're working to rectify. So yeah, I I thought that the modules were going to be a, a pain, but they all insert in in a in a way that doesn't feel it's pretty seamless doesn't feel weird yeah 
uh, the modules, the, the shamans with the, uh, the major discovery tiles, it feels like that could be removed and I like it, it. it wouldn't affect it. It's, it's another piece that just moves in a different spot of the board. It's the one thing that really feels tacked on. It's not... I don't think so. It's because not a huge rules overhead. They kind of go in between um, on the the spaces on the board. And the shaman actually allows you to count like you have an additional die there. And so when you take that main action, you just lay your shaman down showing that you've used him. And you have a, an additional die count there. I used him a lot. I thought that it was a good addition. Um, as you move them, you move your shaman counterclockwise. And when you move it into a new spot, you have a top section, a bottom section. You decide which one you want him to go into based on if he's going to assist you with which tile. Um, and then you can, it's got a special, like a resource or something you can get there, whether it be a discovery tile, whether it be you can get some obsidian. resource in obsidian, which is something new to one of the modules. You can get that by moving your shaman into there. So I liked the shaman. I've used him. Every time we've we've played with the modules, Norm doesn't use them that much, but I I think that he's beneficial. The the one game that I really abused the shaman, the uh, the master discover the major discovery tiles. Uh, there's some in here that are really strong. Yeah, like, all the, like strong. This, this one specifically, they're stronger than your regular discovery uh, tiles. Like this one. You pay one obsidian to get it, and when you use it, you flip back over two of your discovery tiles that you've already used. Mm -hmm. And when we last played with it, this tile, there was two of these tiles, there was one in two different locations, one right after another, and I had gotten a discovery tile that let me move up on the avenue of the dead without having to build a building. And so... The way the scoring works at the end of the eclipse is you take how far up you are on the Avenue of the Dead and multiply that by the number of points shown on here. And most of the time you're building buildings to move up on here and as you're uncovering these buildings the point value gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So once you build three buildings instead of getting five points per level you're getting four points per level and then three points per level. And so the higher you go, you're still getting a lot of points, but not as many. So needless to say, he kicked my butt. I was using that, that to game. move up on here without uncovering these. So when I got to level three without building a single building, I was getting 15 points every eclipse just, be just because I got that, that tile that let me do that. And just because he was a jerk. And also, uh, I'm not sure one of the modules is uh, you have warriors that you put out onto a board and then where you have those warriors is where you build these houses but you get points for all the warriors that are sitting on that board so because that was my strategy I didn't put any houses out but I still was putting the warriors out and I got a ton of points from the warriors I kind of wonder if that's a little bit too strong yeah that actually just concentrating on just putting out the warriors not building the buildings because once you build the building the warrior's gone and you kind of there's like a uh, it does, it's like when you put one warrior down it pushes all the others further out to that get you more points and so when you build you're actually slowing down your ability to push them into the the high point section so i wonder if, if maybe there's a, a little bit of an imbalance there but yeah. if you're doing that you're not doing the pyramid as much maybe so I don't know, we'll have to do some more plays of, of that, and maybe it's just an issue with two players. Maybe Because so. if I'm hitting that hard, then she's not wanting to hit that because... Because if I put one of my warriors out, my guys. And it, it's still going to move his guys it still out. Bumps so I'm not going to do that yeah. to, to benefit him. So that might be a module that comes out for two two players, and we don't we don't play it at two. Yep. But we'll, we'll, we'll see how, how that balance works. But... Yeah. Can we score it? Sure. Who's, who's going first? Mechanics. So mechanics, we do zero to seven for uh, the, try to stay the non-emotional 
how easy it is to play, how well designed, is there any weird broken stuff, things like that. I'm giving it a 7. So I think it's an incredibly well designed game. It's a little challenging when you first learn it again. It's, you know, I can't say how it is to teach it because I don't teach the game. Norm does. He taught it very well, very straightforward. And I, I mean, you pick it up really easy. Again, it can be a bit overwhelming when you first start playing, but it, it comes pretty smooth. Um, you pick up really quickly. So I give it a seven. There's, there's nothing mechanically wise, even considering the base game, including the modules. I, I think everything was very, very well designed. I would give it a seven as well. Uh, there's a slight issues with some of the modules that, that feel like some of them might be too strong or, but I mean, that could just be because of the two player player count that we had it at. So yeah, I, if, if you, if you got it and you're playing with the modules and you find that it's like, I don't like that module, you just take that module mm -hmm. out. The, the base game itself is, is a lot of fun. Yeah. I, I would give it a, I would give it the seven. All right, your wow factors. So wow factor, we do zero to three to, to bump the, the seven point up to a 10 point, regular 10 point scale. I think I would give it a two. I think I'd give it a two. Uh, I don't know that this is a 10 out of 10 game, although it it's kind of kind of edging that way. Hmm. If, if, I, if we did 0.5s, it might be a 9.5, but, and it might change as more, more plays happen because there's just so, it's such an interesting decision space. Like I said, like learning when to be a little bit less efficient because the game's coming to an end and you need to get stuff done. And yeah, that this, this game makes you think about it after you play it. I'm giving it a three. This one's a 10 for me. So at, right now, this is the only game I want to play, which is horrible because I, I want to get Andromeda's Edge in again. I've got, we've got Freedom 5 we need to get in. So there's so many games we need to be playing, but I'm like, okay, let's let's get this on the table again. And so, um, yeah, I lost my train of thought there, but this this would be a, a 10 for me. It is, let's, let's introduce it to people. I think David would really enjoy this game, but right now we're playing Frosthaven with him, so there's there's no other games coming to the table when he comes over. It's just strictly Frosthaven. But I'm, I'm ready to get my sister back so we can play it with her with modules, um, get some friends over to teach them. So this this one's a 10 for me. It is the only game I want to play right now. And it could creep up to a 10 for me in the in the future. But And of course the wow factor is based on that moment in time of, of how much you like the game as well. So that's where the emotion comes in. So um, this one this one's got me at a 10. So there you go. Nine out of ten. It's a great game. <laughs> so, Are we keeping it? Do you want to keep it? Yeah. No. I want to keep it. So yeah. I'm keeping it. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna keep this. They, they've already shipped us a new box. Well, it'd be a shame to get rid of it after we got the new box. Yep. But yeah, no, this is uh, this is a keeper, and you know, if you're interested in it, uh, check when that uh, game found second printing's coming out and you know you'll get it without the uh without the errors even though this is totally playable without it as long as you don't flip it over to the other side yeah <laughs> so yep it's a tenor so what are we reviewing next time yeah so this was the random review it actually brought out one that was actually kind of timely so maybe the algorithm will actually put this out to people so they'll see it but so that means we need to do another Another random selection. Andromeda's Edge, Andromeda's Edge, Andromeda's Edge. So let's see, this is this is ready to go. So just hit I get to hit the button. Get collection and roll. I did something. You 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 totally did something. Oh. Hit, get collection and roll. Okay, I'm not I'm not touching anything. And get this... collection. Fetching your collection. Come on, something something awesome. Flamecraft. Flamecraft. Okay. That's not an, a new game. We're... I have no idea. I've got this sitting over here somewhere. Didn't you get this recently at McKay's? Yeah, I did pick it up recently. Where'd it go? I have no idea. 
Well, we've got it. Did it go on the shelf? Or is it on the bed upstairs? Is it over there? It's over there. I know that's where it is. So this is a fairly new game. Is it? Uh, 20, where's the? Come on back. Where's the date on this thing? It's got the copyright, doesn't have a date on it. Oh, well. Interesting. But this one is kind of a, a lighter game. The, the main reason, uh, I saw this at, at McKay's, and I don't think it was a huge deal. This isn't showing up in any of my uh, thrift store finds, because it was a little bit cheaper than new. But the main reason why I, I picked it up was because... When we got Andromeda's Edge, which is by the same publisher, they came out with a, a little thing in Andromeda's Edge, which is another shop for Flamecraft. Oh, that was one of the players you could choose to be. Yeah, they, yeah. in Andromeda's Edge you could actually play as, as these cutesy, uh, cutesy little dragons. And they, so they also gave you a component that you can add to Flamecraft. To play it and so when we saw it at McKay's how could we not get it it was like I've already got I've already got the promo piece for it I guess I guess I'll get it even though it wasn't as big as a deal as I'd like to see so yeah well we'll give it a try it's cute it's I'm up for it it's cute so that's gonna be our next uh, our next random review so All right. keep an eye out for that and and again, thank you for the 200 subscribers. Wow, that's, that's awesome. just we never thought we'd we'd get there. We're just having some fun with ourselves, and and to know that 200 people thought enough of us to hit that subscribe button is is pretty cool. So we are on Instagram. We're on Blue Sky. Blue Sky, which is a new thing that's kind of exploded. So Norm's enjoying talking to a lot of. A lot of you guys in the community there so a lot of people from the board game community have, have moved over to, to blue sky so if you haven't check it out it's mm -hmm. quite active over there yep so okay we're gonna get some more plays of uh Taya Tehuacan and get flamecraft out on the table all right while still trying to get everything else out on the table so we'll uh we'll catch you next time we appreciate it bye, bye. Look, this guy's doing a, a creme brulee. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs>